I feel I wanna make a song together with with you guys online, and I'll, and like I'm wondering if we can make a song live, pitch it to the record label live, um, and then get it to play on like get it to play on the radio. So like from start to the actual end point of the song, managing the song release and stuff, um all documented so maybe that could be like an educational thing to show people that anyone can do it if I can do it then anyone can we make it like a little mini movie afterwards so I'm gonna start today it's on piano and then let's see how far we get unless the song sucks and nobody ever take no radio takes it but we'll go through the submission process how I submit and shit and then um we'll take it yeah let's let's hope for the best so We'll produce the song live on Facebook or Instagram or something like that. I'm lazy to play this in with the piano because it's just two notes. So I just clicked, I clicked on the mouse until it sounded okay. Um, it's four bars probably, I think. Um, let's play it with the metronome on. You can hear. C minor. So there's a C and I think that's an E. That's, an, that's it. That's the. I'll probably play something with the piano with the MIDI keyboard on the top for maybe the lead top line. I use this program called Archuria V3 Piano. It's one of my favorite piano plugins, and we'll take it from here. This is the piano melody I was playing on my stories. I love violins and I pretty much in almost all my songs is a violin somewhere. So I added a violin on the top line here. thinking of what can we do for a drop but um i just like the way these violins and piano sound so i was thinking let's just make a bigger violin for the drop but no like synth synthesizers or nothing let's just have the whole song being organic real instruments so that same melody dun, dun, dun. i took a cello from contact and processed it a bit and we made a big fucking drop so that with the kick and everything very quick rundown of the drums uh, it's so simple it's gonna irritate you it's gonna anger you uh, for my main kick probably I think it's the only I have a smaller kick in the intro there but the main kick is um, I use I always use kick 2 uh, to synthesize my own drums I don't like to use samples with the synths you can make it a bit louder and um, refine it a bit more and then um, just the drums I've got a snare mostly cashmere packs and vengeance I still use vengeance old school um, Vengeance, told you. That's it. That is completely it for the drums. So like it'll sound like this, most basic. And the only thing moving the drums is the bass line. I just gave a uh, probably serum. Yeah, I use a serum and it's named Grimy Sub. As you can see there, I use the, I use the sub almost for all of my songs. Um, and it's playing this melody. I don't even know if you can hear it through the phone. If you'll, yeah. 
and that's it. That's that's the drums. Like I said, the song piano chords were in C minor, so I'm just going to go find a vocal on Splice uh, in C minor. It's 105 BPM, but we'll work on that. And yeah, I'm just going to use this for the song. Let's do it. Well, let's share it so it's quick and easy. Yesterday and tomorrow. Now I feel sad and strange. I was your every day, but then you just walked away. It's silent, silent and gray. Splice, the program I just mentioned now, but with the vocal, you, uh, if for those who don't know, you just pay a, a monthly subscription and um you 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 get like credits to use on on different vocals and samples and stuff so um anything you use on splice you're allowed to use because you've essentially paid for the, the using your subscription uh so that's an easy way to get nice vocals and stuff for your songs um, i'm gonna stop now for the night because i took an edible as well and it's starting to kick in and i'm gonna fuck it up so tomorrow we'll come back to this <laughs> make the chorus sound a bit better because I stole the vocal and don't have anything anyone to re-sing it for me uh, you link the vocal to a synth and every time you press the key they'll talk but only to the get my chords out of it the higher you go Did some vocal effects <coughs> just to make it a bit nicer, but also added some ad libbies and some pre verb. I don't know what you really call it, I think it's called pre verb. I call it pre verb, but it like emphasizes a vocal coming in. Psychoacoustics, uh, ear candy, just for fun. And now we're almost in the end game here, people. So I have my piano. I think we're done with the song actually. I'm just adding like stuff. So I added um, as a uh, thing called Analog Lab. And it makes some cool analog y sounds. So I just put a little pad underneath the piano. I automated this movement so it wobbles. done if I tweak it anymore I'm gonna oops I'm gonna ruin it but um, yeah I've, I've made I've mastered it with just I usually do basic mastering nothing crazy uh, I just get the loudness up I mix it down as best I can so that mastering is just bringing the volume up that's the volume I like to stick to negative six laughs and I use the span to check my my lows and highs and mid levels and I'm gonna send it off to some record labels. I'll show you the emails as well. Let's see if anyone accepts it. So whenever someone finishes a song, you gotta think of like what is your plan for the song? Is it made for a for the club, for DJs? Is it made for a movie score? Is it made for radio? Whatever. And um, then you gotta figure out how you can accomplish what it was made for. So. This one particularly, I think will sound cool on radio. So whenever I make a song that, that I think will work on radio, I have like three record labels, two or three record labels that I always have in mind. Um, and I'll send to one at a time instead of sending to multiples. And I'll wait for either a accept or a reject. You gotta remember that um, rejection is part of this game. Music is very, very subjective. So even if you think it's the best song in the world, Sometimes it's going to get rejected. Most of the time it's going to get rejected. So 
um, gonna flip. This is my email. I, uh, I won't show, like, I won't show who I'm sending it to yet, uh, in case people don't want the email addresses displayed. But, um, quick and easy email. Hope you like the song. Blah blah blah. I feel it's the right fit for the label and send. So I'll send it and let's see if they reject it or not. Several days later. Did it fly from the first label? Oh, I'll take the names out because again, I don't know if people want their names and email addresses displayed. But uh, hey, Keaton, great to hear from you. We'd be delighted to work on something great for you. Awesome. Would you be open to a shorter radio edit? Um, best. So. That, that brings up a good point. Let me show you what I would do to make this a radio song and the formula that actually goes into it. So I'm going to show you how I, <coughs> I set up a project for, for radio. Um, I usually create markers. You must remember something with, with radio. You can have almost... There's a lot that goes into it. Let me explain that firstly. You've got a playlisting committee that's got to listen to it. You've got a record label that's got to approve it. And you've got an artist in yourself that's got to be happy with it. And when those three things come together, you might get a radio play. But a lot of factors go into it. The radio station, the style of song, the quality of the song, the quality of the <coughs> the master, quality of the vocalists, blah, 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 blah. Now, one of the most important things with radio is they're never going to hear an, a nine-minute uh, deep techno song playlisted on radio in the morning, you know what I mean? It, it makes no sense. So <clears throat> you got to look at your track and see where where you might lose your your listener's attention. And again, this is not the most artistic way of looking at it because you you also want to take people on the journey with your song. But when it comes to radio, there ain't no time for journeys, but you got to try and make it work. So you're, definitely your song can't be longer than three and a half minutes. Or let's say, let's say definitely not longer than four minutes. Okay, and then within the first few seconds, within the first 15 seconds is where you got to get your vocal going because, yeah, anything longer than that is taken as you're losing the viewer's attention. So what I do is I make markers like this. And um, you can see my intro, my verse, my chorus, the drop, kick and bass, taking out the drop verse. And then I... And then I um, I sort of use I look at I, I, I look at the symmetry of of everything. So you can see I, I have a a little loop loop marker there to see like the size and timing of everything. And I notice that a lot of the attacks that go to radio, the symmetry is almost the same. So um for instance, look at the size of the intro and the size of verse one. It's almost exactly the same, which means your intro where there's nothing exciting happening in this point is exactly the same length of time as your verse, which is your main thing. Um, and that's not necessarily a good thing. So what you, what I would do is I would take the intro and I would actually just take cut the timing off completely. Um, with Ableton, it has quite a cool feature where you can um, just right click on, on your marker and say delete time. And then it basically, um, it's going to actually shift your entire song. So what I usually do is I make a full song and then, fuck, this video is going long. I make a full song and then um, I use my, I make a radio version by doing this, these time cuts. Um, and then I'll go into the project, obviously, and smooth it out in case the transitions are a bit weird in different spots. Um, so now my intro is half the size of of the half the size of the verse, and the verse the vocals will start a lot quicker. Um, and like the the label exec that mailed me that in the previous video, like they do know what they're talking about. So as soon as they hear it, they'll know what needs to be done. And I usually take their advice. This this person in particular knows exactly been in the music industry for very long. They know a lot more than me, so. I always take the advice when it comes to stuff like this. So now our intro is half, and our verse comes in a lot quicker. And now, <clears throat> I think between this, chorus goes straight into the chorus. Um, that's fine. There's a small little mini build up and then the drop, which is cool. And I'll do that all the way until the end. Um, let me let me do it off camera, and I'll send the email and, and see if they like it. 
So after sending the new version, um, we got to chatting and we realized that whole album was worth the music. So yeah, one thing led to another. So we, we're going to release the whole album, but Silent and Grey is going to be the lead single on the album. Very excited. So now we can take it through the process of just going, I'm screen recording this on my phone. Um, yeah, let's let's take it through the process of what happens next. We we've been documenting the making of the song for what almost a year now, maybe even more than a year if I check the date. And my album comes out in a week. That's on the the songs on the album. And it's seven o'clock in the morning on a Saturday, and I'm on my way to shoot the music video for the song. So I'll we will do some behind the scenes on the music video. We've got quite a cool idea myself and Chad. Um, yeah, so we've made the song. We've got the song signed to a label. Um, then we've got a fucking show on our hands. So stay tuned. I really hope this is going to be an educational video for everyone. But yeah, wish us luck. Oof. So yesterday we were supposed to shoot the music video. Oh, well, we did actually shoot the music video. Um, but we can't use any other footage. Uh, they, we used this violin also in the shot. And... Uh, the people from that was the actress, uh, actress, or people involved, asked me where I got it from, the violin. And I've had this violin for like ten years now. And I told them it was, uh, it came from a drug addict. It was probably stolen. Um, it was just a joke. I actually got it from Cash Crusaders, but uh, they took it serious. And then they said they don't want to be involved in the music video because. Um, I'm dealing in stolen goods so plan b is i mean plan a is out and i'm not sure what plan b is yet but for now we don't have a music video so we'll see what happens um part of the game i have a big mouth and not everyone i must i keep forgetting that like not like i say i not everyone has the same stupid sense of humor that i have but we live we learn so I just got word from the record label that um, the TV show, morning show, Expresso would like us to come perform some tracks on Good Friday. So I think that's like 8th of April or 9th of April or something. But obviously we're putting Silent and Grey in there as well. So we get more bang for our buck in this movie because not only were we pushing, we were only pushing for radio, but then we started making a music video and now we're going to get to perform it on live TV. So I'll shoot some behind the scenes and we can put that on there too. But yeah, uh, we didn't plan on that, but it's happening and I'm so excited for that one. So stay tuned. We'll transition to behind the scenes footage. <laughs> One of the best in the business here, and he is going to officially Thank make this kind. a public, public holiday, my brother. That is for a little Thank bit of you, love sir. and a whole lot of respect, ladies and gents. It is Grimehouse with Silent and Grey. Take it away. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm about to play your song Silent and Grey. Oh, cool. On the radio. Tell us more about this song. Um, I, I, it's, it's More importantly than the song itself is the way it was made. I, I remember it was about a year ago I went on Instagram Live and I, I, I used like the people who were in the live to help me make the song. Very so they cool. were like, well, maybe if you add this and add that. So wow. I did stuff. And um, what I said on the live was... And this was like maybe more than a year ago. Yeah. Like, let's make a song with you guys. Amazing. It's all like up and coming producers and, and budding people. And let's make it from scratch. Um, I documented the process of like sending it to record labels and, and doing this. And I said, then the day will come where the song will play on radio. Yeah. And just to show everybody an educational thing of how you can make something from scratch. And then maybe down the line, if you're lucky, you can get it to radio. Anybody can do it. That's so, amazing. Um, I have a nice long little mini documentary of the Ooh, process. I and love it. So it's, I'm glad that we're here and you're playing it because it's pretty much the end of that wow. process. And 
it can help some people maybe that is absolutely amazing and where can people watch this mini documentary this collaboration the most amazing collaboration i've ever heard of um why is there sugar here (laughs) (laughs) because we're sweet that's why okay okay, nice (laughs) I hope that's sugar. <laughs> Ooh. It could be salt as, as I think. Definitely. I think, no, it's definitely sugar. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> sugar. From like Joburg back to Pretoria at night in a, in a, like a ball gown. <laughs> it was actually, that was a memorable, that was a flippin' memorable. It's fun. Everything here is fun. You heard it straight. And I'm going to break into the conference that's happening downstairs now. It looks yes, like we're going to go food. do that. Grandma's is going to go play a set unbeknownst to the tomorrow. Now feel sad and strange.